cruise news time. Well, are you vaccinated and ready to cruise? Well, hold on to your hat. Your vaccine protocol may not be good enough. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news updates. Well, we're going to talk cruise news. I got the Canada story I haven't covered yet. We're going to talk about vaccines and cruising. But first, I just got to say a big thank you to every one of you that participated in the conversation around Saturday's show. That was the show where I uh, had an interesting thought experiment where I noticed the the conversation around uh, prices of cruises and casinos tied it to non-smoking, and I made the big end around and tied it to Disney. I did not know that that conversation was going to be so enjoyable. Thanks. I just want to say thanks. Those comments were filled with people that were hating on smokers. It was filled with people who were hating on gambling. It was filled with people who were hating on carnival. It was filled with people who felt like because they cruised on Disney that they were better than the rest of the world. Then it was also filled with people who cruised on carnival who thought that everybody else was a big bore. All I'm saying is, uh, you know, the the elitism aside, the fact that the elitism was there, it made me happy. There was no talk about vaccines. There was no talk about the CDC. It was just a good old crew slugfest among those people that love their brands the most and their cause. And yeah, it was cool. Uh, you know, but seriously, it, it, it's okay how everybody else cruises. And when you get to heaven, nobody's going to go, oh, you, you cruised on Carnival or you cruised on Disney. Let's give you a spot up front. Shocker. But let's talk cruise news. Let me talk to Canada story first. We'll finish up with the vaccines. Uh, Canada, they announced last week that they would be reopening their cruise ports in November of 2021 instead of February of 2022. I've seen all kinds of speculation as to why this was done. Of course, a lot of people ran it through their political filter, felt it was some sort of political ploy. So let me offer another reason. First of all, kudos to Canada for looking at the situation and saying, well, it looks better. Uh, We don't have to stay closed down until February. Let's open it up in November. Most of the time, people would be happy with that, but people figured out a way to get mad about it. Here's why people had a problem with it. When you reopen the cruise ports in November, the cruise season will basically be over to Alaska, to ports in Canada. And so have you really done any anything good why do it in november opposed to february here's my supposition as to why they did it to me there's a real compelling reason to start cruising in canada in november opposed to february it's it's about time the cruise restart is slow you need a green light you need somebody saying that you can cruise again then you need a period of time to get it going uh case in point the cruise restart we, we still have a small percentage of cruise ships cruising right now, and we've been doing the cruise restart for a couple months. And so, uh, yeah, it, it makes sense uh, up in Canada to give them months and months to get cruising going again. To me, it's, it's really not any more complex than that. I'm glad that they looked at what was going on and said, let's open it up now instead of waiting uh, the long period until February. Let's give businesses and companies and travelers ample opportunity to plan their next Canadian cruise or their cruise to Alaska that has a Canadian stop. I I think it's good news for cruising. All right, let's talk about the big developments when it comes to vaccines. Uh, Big news alert, vaccines are the path to cruising right now. Cruise companies are relying heavily on vaccinated passengers to get the cruise restart going. But the challenge that everybody is facing right now is the rapid change that is coming in health protocols, coming in vaccine information, uh, all of it, uh, variants. There's a lot of things that are going on. And so you see agencies like the CDC, organizations like the WHO, and companies like cruise lines trying to navigate all of the change that is happening because of the change uh, in the landscape when it comes to this virus. The latest thing that's causing concern in many cruisers is the announcement that several cruise lines will not allow mixed vaccination. Man, when this story broke a few days ago, I didn't even know that mixed vaccination was a problem. I didn't even know that people were doing it, but uh, I dug into it. Here, here's here's what mixed vaccination is. So many of the vaccines that are out for COVID require two shots. 
Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, they all require two shots and a period of time after your second shot before you're considered fully vaccinated. Uh, there is a single shot Johnson & Johnson that just requires a single shot and a period of time after that single shot before you're considered fully vaccinated. Well, in the U.S., we've had plenty of those things, uh, Moderna and Pfizer and Johnson and & Johnson. And so for me, my first shot was Pfizer. And then I think it was three weeks later, I went and got the second shot. It was Pfizer. And then 14 days after that, I was considered fully vaccinated and the cruise lines are happy with that. And all of that is because there really was an abundance of vaccines in the U.S. And I would say that most people in the U.S. got the same kind of shot. If they got the Moderna, they got a second Moderna. Pfizer, second Pfizer. Uh, we weren't really doing AstraZeneca here. Johnson & Johnson, for sure, single shot. Now, the challenge arose in countries where they did not have a surplus of vaccines. The goal was to get everybody vaccinated, to get them their two shots. And so there was a mixing of vaccines in some situation. I know this was a scenario that happened in Canada, where you might have got one AstraZeneca and then you may have gotten a Moderna or a Pfizer for your second shot. Uh, Johnson Johnson, single shot everywhere. I don't think anybody's mixing Johnson and Johnson. But the challenge when you mix the AstraZeneca and either the Moderna and the Pfizer is they're different types of vaccines. The Moderna and the Pfizer are mRNA vaccines and the AstraZeneca is a vector vaccine. And they have not studied what happens when you do a vector vaccine and an mRNA vaccine. Does it still give you the level of efficacy that you would want to prevent people from getting severely ill with COVID. And when I say it has not been studied, it's not been studied by the FDA. I know that over in the UK, there have been studies of what mixed vaccination, mixed vaccine, whether they're uh, effective or not. Uh, but uh, when it comes to cruising in the US, it's really the CDC and the FDA that are kind of setting the standards. So it has been studied in some places, just not thoroughly by the FDA. So the WHO, the CDC definitely indicating there's a challenge with mixed vaccines as it's not been studied enough to know what the what is. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you how this affects cruising. But before I do, let me quickly invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you like staying up to date with everything that's going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. Thank you in advance. So why is this a big deal for cruising? Well, we have cruise lines coming out saying that people that have had a mixed vaccination, depending on how that worked out, may or may not be able to cruise with them. Holland America Line, Princess, Carnival, Norwegian, all releasing protocols around mixed vaccination. And uh, sadly, they're not. Uh, there's not a standard there. Some cruise lines, Holland America, they're saying that you can't mix AstraZeneca with anything. It has to be all AstraZeneca. But if you've mixed Moderna and Pfizer, because they're both mRNA vaccines, well, that's cool. And then you got like Norwegian taking a stronger stance against it, saying that if you've had any mixed vaccines, it's not going to work. So for those cruisers out there that had to mix their vaccines, well, the, the path to cruising just got a little more rocky. And honestly, I don't think it's going to be a big deal for U.S. cruisers because I believe that most U.S. cruisers probably got the same, uh, you know, brand or flavor of vaccine. But I do see this being a challenge as people are able to come from outside the U.S. and take cruises from the U.S., uh, people from Canada, for example, uh, will they have this mixed vaccine problem? And will the cruise line that they're going on, will they allow them to cruise? And look, I know there's a lot of people already out there going, oh, I'm so tired of the vaccines. I, I don't want to take the vaccine. When can I try? travel without the vaccine, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. With the Delta variant driving numbers uh, of COVID up in the U.S., with the statistics coming out that most of the people that are currently getting sick and passing away from COVID being unvaccinated people, uh, the cruise lines are in the business to make money. And you know what doesn't make money? Uh, sick and dead passengers. And so I believe that they believe the quickest path to profit is to make sure that everybody is vaccinated. So I do believe that you will continue to see a heavy emphasis on vaccinated cruising uh, as a majority of cruisers. No doubt in my mind that that's going to be true for the rest of 2021. And it would not surprise me that if that was true for most of 2022. I've said it before, this cruise Cruise restart is going to be rocky. It's not going to be quick. And uh, if you don't have a tolerance for chaos, if you don't have a tolerance for uh, all the changes going on in cruising, this is not the time to go cruising. Look, I'm a big cheerleader for cruising. I want as many people to go cruising as possible, but I don't want people to be turned off by cruising. So if you're a cruiser out there and you're looking for a cruise experience that's similar to 2019, but you're somebody who doesn't want to be vaccinated, somebody who doesn't want to wear a mask, stay away from cruising for right now. The cruise restart will go forward. They're going 
going to hang heavily on vaccines, and uh, we'll get there. But uh, for some people, this is not this is not the environment that you want to be in. Look, that's just my take on the story. I would love to hear yours. What do you think about all this? Excited that Canada's opening up? Well, what? Why do you think they're doing it in November? And what about this mixed vaccine? Is that a problem for you or uh, not? I'll leave a comment below. Thanks so much for checking out the show today. Please hit the like button, or the TSA is going to go through your checked luggage and then lock it. But you're one of those people that never set a combo for your bag and. You're not going to be able to get into it. Just, just hit the like button. It's too much hassle. This is Tony with La Lita Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.